Welcome to Makeup Mondays. Today is gonna to be very special because I'm working with a brand new makeup company. Our day reached out to me and they love watching me turn makeup into watercolor paint and asked if I would be willing to do some for their brand new eyeshadow palettes. So we're gonna open up this package together. I don't know what's inside yet. I can't wait to see the colors. First impressions are really good. These are nice heavy packages and I love how they feel. Oh, they've got a mirror inside too. These are some lovely neutral shades and I'm excited to work with them. Neutrals are really fun in art and I can't wait to see what that nice black looks like as paint. What's this one gonna be? Ooh, we've got some nice warm tones. That bottom orangey color, ooh, that one is gonna be something special. Gosh, some of those are really lovely. That rose gold color though, wow. Oh my God, stop it. No, okay, so they do have some really bright, fun colors. I think this is definitely the palette for Makeup Monday today. Did you see that? Oh my God, so pretty. And we've got some purples too. Okay, this is a really good collection, but I would love your help. Help me pick out which one from that rainbow palette we should do first. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm leaning towards the blue, but I would love your input. Thank you so much, Art Day. This is really special. I have a very petty favorite new hobby, and I would love to tell you about it while I turn this just released R Day eyeshadow palette into some watercolor paint for you. Y'all would be surprised, or maybe you wouldn't, about the number of just ignorant, spiteful, nonsense hate comments that I get on this account. And my new very favorite thing to do is just pin them to the top and let you guys deal with them. This has lovingly become known as my pin of shame, and lately I've gotten to use it a whole bunch because I made a five-part series detailing out all of the things Jeffree Star has done in a row that make me think he's a terrible person. The hate comments are solid gold. And they don't seem to happen right away. Usually when I post something, the initial maybe million people that see it are pretty much on board. They are familiar with what goes on here on this channel, but the new people that show up, ooh, ooh they bring their whole keyboards with them. So if you love creating, but you do constantly have have to deal with a bunch of ignorant nonsense being commented all over your hard work, just make a game out of it. This is probably the most fun I've had on the internet in quite some time because the level of comebacks that you guys give is just gold medal. I, I can't. <laughs> Some of it is so funny. Just the level of education I'm receiving with, with some of these clapbacks, they are amazing. So if you're struggling with this problem on your account, I mean, I don't know, this might not be the healthiest way to deal with it, but it sure is a whole lot of fun. So um, thank you to all of you who come in here and leave your trash on my account. And thank you so much to all of those who are so full of love and clapbacks that come in here and help clean it up. So a gold star to every single one of you. I really appreciate all of you, the good, the bad, the ugly, the nonsense, all of it. Thank you all. How to turn eyeshadow into paint. Step one, remove all of the product from the compact and take care to get every single last bit of it so the makeup police don't come to your door and arrest you for wasting it. Then use a credit card or a palette knife to chop that stuff up party style. The finer the powder, the easier it will be in your remaining steps. Step three, add an equal part in a one-to-one -one ratio of watercolor binder to your eyeshadow. Watercolor binder can be purchased from my shop or I have a recipe for free to make your own on my page. Next, you're gonna make Mix the watercolor binder and eyeshadow together with your palette knife and a bonus optional step is to use a paint muller to further incorporate those two materials to get a perfectly smooth finished paint. I have a very helpful how-to playlist that covers lots of tips and tricks as well as paint muller alternatives. I hope this helps answer some of your questions and again it's watercolor binder, it's watercolor binder, it's watercolor binder. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the life of a man named Bob Ross while I turn the this beautiful R Day eyeshadow palette into watercolor paint for you. Bob Ross, Robert Norman Ross, was born on October 29, 1942, and he passed on July 4, 1995. 
He was best known for his TV show where he tried to teach us all how to paint happy little trees. Did you know that Bob Ross lost part of his left index finger when he was working as a carpenter with his dad? I just learned that today, so I thought I would share. When he turned 18, he enlisted in the United States Air Force and he started as a medical records technician. He rose to the rank of Master Sergeant and served as the first sergeant to the clinic at Isleson Air Force Base in Alaska. And this is where he saw the snow and mountains that would appear in so many of his paintings. You can thank the military for his wonderful peaceful tone. He had to be such a big tough guy in the military that when he left he vowed never to raise his voice again and that's why we have peaceful Bob Ross. He always seems to paint a perfect masterpiece in just a few minutes but he developed the skill while he was in the military. He had a lot of jobs with very short breaks and he would try to paint something fabulous as quickly as he could and I'd say he got pretty good at it. You can also thank the military for his interest in painting almost entirely. He said that he got interested in the idea after attending an art class at the Anchorage USO Club. Bob Ross learned his famous style after watching a TV show called The Magic of Oil Painting hosted by Bill Alexander. This allowed him to make an oil painting within about 30 minutes and he mastered the skill and never looked back. Some of his first paintings were of Alaska and he did them on novelty gold mining pans. I'd like to tell you a little bit more about a guy named Bob Ross while I make some watercolor paint out of this beautiful eyeshadow palette by our day. This is part two. Some of Bob Ross's earliest paintings were on novelty gold mining pans and eventually his income from the sales of his paintings would surpass his military salary so he retired from the Air Force in 1981 as a master sergeant. He left Alaska and returned to Florida where he grew up. He worked for a little while with Bill Alexander and joined his Alexander Magic Art Supplies Company and he became a traveling salesman and tutor. A good friend named Annette, who attended one of his sessions in Clearwater, Florida, convinced him that he could succeed on his own. So she, along with him and his wife, pooled their savings to create his company, which didn't do very well at first. At the time, he had a huge afro, and the reason why he had it is because it was the cheapest hairstyle to maintain. And they put it on the logo, and at that point he was like, oh shoot. Even though he didn't like it, he had to keep it because he was in a million pictures with that hairstyle. And thank you to everybody in the comments section that told me that. I thought it was a really fun thing to add to the video. Bob Ross once said, I think there's an artist hidden at the bottom of every single one of us, and I could not agree more. I'd like to tell you a little bit about a guy named Steve Irwin while I make this beautiful R Day eyeshadow palette into watercolor paint. Stephen Robert Irwin was born Born on February 22, 1962 in Upper Fern Tree Gully, Victoria in Australia. When he was eight years old, his parents moved the family to Beerwa, Queensland and opened up the Beerwa Reptile Park in 1970. He got to grow up in a zoo. He grew up loving all kinds of animals from the very start, but especially reptiles. Ten years after his parents opened the park in 1980, the wildlife park was renamed named to Queensland Reptile and Fauna Park. This was Steve's home and the place he loved the most. He worked countless hours with his best friend Wes Mannion caring for the wildlife and maintaining the ground. Did you know that Steve Irwin used to spend months on end living in the most remote areas of far north Queensland catching problem crocodiles for the Queensland government? Because I sure did not. He did all of this with the company of his little dog, Stewie. Steve developed crocodile capture and management techniques that are now utilized with crocodilians all around the world. This information is coming from the Australia Zoo website and I highly encourage you to take a look. It has lots of fun facts about Steve Irwin and I just love him so much and I'm probably going to have to talk about him in another video because the man is so interesting. I'm not crying, you're crying. Here's some more wonderful stuff about Steve Irwin. In 1980, the Family Wildlife Park was named Queensland Reptile and Fauna Park, and Steve Irwin called it his own home. He worked there countless hours to make sure all of the animals were taken care of and the grounds were perfect. And his hard work paid off. In 1991, he took over managing the wildlife park and he met his wife, Terry. She was visiting as a tourist on the 6th of October. 
They were married in Eugene, Oregon on the 4th of June the very next year. Instead of a honeymoon, the couple embarked on filming a wildlife documentary with John Stainton from the Best Picture Show Company. The show was so successful that it turned into a series and the crocodile hunter was born. Oh my god, Carlin, get it together. He passed in 2006. Why are you crying? Stop it. The same year, Steve's parents retired and he worked tirelessly to improve and expand the wildlife park. He named it to the Australia Zoo in 1998 and Steve's vision for the world's best zoo was coming into fruition. In July 2006, he set out, oh my god, pull it together. In July 2006, he set out his 10-year business plan for the beloved zoo and he couldn't know that he would be gone just two months later. Terry, Bindi, and Robert run the zoo to this day. We miss you so much. I finished turning the whole Our Day palette into watercolor paint today and I'm really curious to see what I can make with it so I decided to paint very fancy burlesque inspired lady. When I made the swatch card I tried to make them as opaque as possible so you could see how shiny each of these paints are but for this one I want to show off as much texture as I can get. With metallic eyeshadows they tend to be a little bit more grainy than a normal watercolor. They don't have that beautiful bleed inky effect so you kind of have to build up your texture where you want it with your paintbrush. I really think this came out nice. If you would like to call this palette your very own you are welcome to bid on it on eBay. Starting bid is one dollar and it will be a 10 day auction because that's how long it takes for the paint to dry. I'm also including my little painting of the fancy burlesque lady as well as the swatch page but I am keeping those round ones. 